seeking for daily bread in the POS business. She said, if na POS business I go do, show me. As she swung the bottle filled with little water upward for the umpteenth time, you could see her frustration as, she, as the bottle landed on the table, standing erect yet again. She couldn't understand why fate would be so cruel by choosing such a demeaning path for her. How on earth? Similar comical content as this abound in the social media space, disparaging the efforts of financial inclusion drivers in the country. Miles Murray said, when purpose is unknown, abuse is inevitable. This quote perfectly describes the disposition of many Nigerians who play some parts in the delivery of critical financial services to the last mile in the bid to deepen financial inclusion in the country. Interestingly, many of them are unaware that the role they play by way of cash in cash out using the POS devices is just a fraction of the financial inclusion. Many of them are unaware that the role they play by way of cash in cash out using the POS devices is just a fraction of what financial inclusion entails. And this is because nowadays, the entry point for many coming into the sector is through the acquisition of the POS terminal. This knowledge gap is also the reason many revert to themselves as POS agents rather than the actual mobile money and bank agents that they have. Another indication to drive home this point is the obvious denigration of the business by many graduates who feel that the POS business is the last alternative for the frustrated ones who couldn't get their dream jobs. Hence, the meme and comedy skits on social media to traduce the business and those involved in it. For the records, financial inclusion is a deliberate policy of the federal government to alleviate poverty and reduce inequality gap in the country by formulating strategies in tandem with the World Bank goals to financially include 80% of the Nigerian population. Mobile money and bank agents, who coincidentally are at the last rung of the ladder, are the most important players in the drive to financially include the excluded population of the country. Many who have caught the dream since its inception in 2011 have carried the badge with dignity and honor. The progress achieved so far in this drive haven't been without sweat and blood of mobile money and bank agents. It is therefore saddening, seeing how many who now enjoy the ease of access to financial services and pretenders parading themselves as agents make mockery of the business. These recent realities have the propensity of draining the goals of financial inclusion, and all players in the industry have roles to play in ensuring that the sanctity of the business is upheld through intense public awareness agent training and retraining, and increase in innovative product offerings. Actually, the business is not for those who seek daily bread. The business is for those who are ready to go all the way to providing critical financial services to the last mile, and also making a decent living while at it. Well, the way I see this issue, I, I believe perhaps maybe there should be what I call a cooperative approach. When I say a cooperative approach, I mean maybe there should be a coming together of groups of POS users, other some form of an organization, which will now enhance their training to develop and deepen this market more. I, I see um, that otherwise, you will continue to see, as he mentioned, these gaps in their knowledge, this uh, inability to know what to do. I, I don't know how you see it. Okay, uh, thank you. So, there is actually an association okay. of uh, Association of Mobile Money and Bank Good. Agents in Nigeria, uh, which uh, do even in the six national conferences coming up next month, right? Um, but beyond that, right? Uh, the problem we are seeing right now in today's sector, just like you were talking about 
climate change issue, presidential campaign, which are not issue based, right? It's a problem. I will narrow it down. Let me, for my understanding, financial inclusion from statistics shows that we have over 100 million bankable adults. Adults who are banked. Who, who, who of which over 50% of them are not banked. Hmm. Right? Now, where the problem is, is this. The cattle era, people who sell cattle, people who sell tomato, people who sell yeah in the north, in the far north and stuff like that, they deal with cash. You talk about privatization of business the other time, and you talked about probably access to finance. But cash is an enemy of progress. Because with that exchange of cash, you lost data. So if I want to finance your business, how do, want, how do I want to know how your business moves? Is it on absorption? And that's why you see high default rates in the loans that we are seeing, right? Because there is no policy that is sweet to the market because the data is missing. People are actually transacting with cash, exchange of cash by hand, no data to support it. Mm. So what this financial inclusion entails is, number one, it's promoting identity, just like the enforcement of NIN, because if you, if you want to open an account, on a standard full-fledged account to be able to transact in millions because it will amaze you that all this base pyramid last mile are the people who are actually transacting huge amount of money. See that over 40 million Nigerians that are bankable, that are already banked at the moment, they are living on salary. How much salary that is calculated? A country can do 5, 10 million naira business in a day. But BVN uh, version 1, BVN version 2, do not allow them because you have basic identity. If you want to open a bank account, you have to have a national ID. You don't have. Do you understand? So there are a lot of factors, problem of development. So what this PLS business entails is a lot, just like you have said. There are a lot of knowledge gap because people don't really understand what service they are actually rendering. Right? Now, you are meant to bank to, to create service for the on-bank and the under-bank. Who are the on-bank? These are the categories I just explained earlier. Mm -hmm. Who don't even have a bank account mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. But what the current situation, that is over 50 million Nigerians, mm -hmm. the current situation that we have in mobile money business today is the 40 million plus Nigerians that are banked already that we are fighting. Because mm -hmm. it is somebody who has a bank account that has an ATM card. Mm -hmm. If you are not bank, you can't have an ATM card to transact with. Mm -hmm. do, do you understand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, meaning that it is these 40 million that are not even doing much transactions like that until maybe a surge of when they pay salary. <laughs> By the time you do the third week of the month or second week of the month, transactions are going down because, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. people that uh, already have those things, it's very few that are actually uh, people who are doing real business. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, people should see themselves as a problem solver. That is what is missing. Mm -hmm. They are not seeing themselves as solving problem. They are seeing themselves, and it's an ideology as a general, mm -hmm. that I just want to make money. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason why you see a pure tough, you know, that was a year like that, I thought probably around 2006, 2007, 2008, when pure tough business started. Mm -hmm. You're right. You just see one person start pay other business and say, ah, there's money here. All of Nigerians are rushing into pay other business. Mm -hmm. You see uh, fintechs now, even those who are dummy, because they have money, they just, hello, I want to start fintech business. How much will I get licenses? A lot of licenses wasted there. Yeah. They have money, they are using their capitalist, uh, you know, veto power to load on people or whatever, but they are messing things up. Because they don't really understand the problem they want to solve. Mm -hmm. They are just seeing it in the aspect of, I want to make money. Mm -hmm. The same thing goes to the issue of POS. Just like he said, you said, people feel, if I don't get my dream job, let me go and start a POS business. Mm -hmm. uh, say, so that I'll be able to do my daily bread. Mm -hmm. it, sh it shouldn't mm -hmm. be that way. What problem are you solving? Is it like you have to have 
10 kilometer walk to the bank, then provide a one-stop shop where you have an agent that can actually provide that service instead of you walking 10 kilometers. Let's say for every one kilometer, let us have one, one or two, two agents. It solves that, that problem. Right. Or you have an area where a bank is situated and you have a bank has to attend to two, three thousand people in a day. Mm -hmm. If you have like 10, 20 POS agents who are not far from there, it will decentralize that because all these transactions are still passing through the banks. So another problem that is seen is banks seeing those agents as competitors. So wait, mm -hmm. a country that we, we, we live in. Things will happen, follow due process for chargeback and stuff like that. You see them coming back to go and your money is with the POS. I will not inform you not to use POS agent again. Mm -hmm. It doesn't speak well of a development that is creating jobs, that is solving a problem, that you are also making money from it and it's paying your bills, paying your salary. That is a pure knowledge gap. Mm -hmm. Because those people who are saying that, who are staff an employment, uh, employee of those banks mm. do not know what they are saying. Mm. It shouldn't come out. So you can see that beyond the POS business, even when you go into other sector of Nigeria, everything like that happens. If you see somebody saying flower like that, they don't know the purpose. Mm. Right? That's the so I think um, what I will speak to is the propensity of Nigerians to double into any business without really understanding mm. what it entails. Mm. Uh, what we have seen so far in the mobile money and uh, agency banking is that you, when you even ask the so-called agents uh, to, about financial inclusion, they don't have, I mean, they don't have information about Mm -hmm. So don't, they don't know this, the role they are playing in the sector. Mm -hmm. Because, and like you said, we are supposed to include many excluded Nigerians into the financial mm -hmm. space. Yes. And why? Because you need to reduce poverty. Mm -hmm. um, in a situation where people don't have access to finance, mm -hmm. there's no way you can have access to finance when you cannot build credit. And how do you build credit into have a bank account? Mm -hmm. That is what a financial institution will look at to see, I mean, it is easier for salary earners to get credits because mm -hmm. they have transactional history that the banks can look at. Mm -hmm. But for the organizer, for the carpenter, who do not have account for your mechanics? When you, I mean, your engineer, when after they finish fixing your car, you ask them, You want to pay? They say, Me, I don't use account. To, how much do I have? But the end money in a week, you know, you can, you can put figures to what they have. I mean, at the end of the day, when they need some other things to expand their business and to do some other things, they don't have access to this finance because they have not built a financial history. history. history that the banks can use. So in this case, as a mobile money or bank agent, you are able to, number one, give identity to Nigerians by way of NIN, do BVN enrollment. These are services that we are supposed to be offering. You are supposed to be able to open bank accounts and issue ATM cards. But what you see out there is because I see Mr. A doing well with a POS terminal. Then I joined the free. I don't even understand why the business exists. Mm. And that is why when they even have issues, like you said, and then the bank staff, so on, on, you know, unfortunately, many of them to, uh, I mean, have this knowledge gap. We still need to train them. So they even, I mean, think more of themselves because they, um, <laughs> they love fairness. <laughs> they, because they are in suit. I mean, they feel they understand the business more than you do. Mm. But sometimes you see that PS, mobile money, bank agents out there have more knowledge about the business than even some of, some of the bankers. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. So you, you need to begin to see why. And you mentioned something that there should be an association. Yeah, there has been an association that, I mean, since 2015, mm -hmm. doing a lot. I mean, I can tell you that the awareness about the business, the sector today, I mean, its own, you can, I mean, say that 
Amban has done a lot about, I mean, creating awareness, I mean, giving finance uh, support to, financial support to agents and, and then helping also to build some products because of the, the feed knowledge that many of the members have. So Nigerians have the, that habit of joining anything, a, this well, copycat bad. approach. We just want to join, we just want to do it, and then you begin to mess things up, and then that's where you hear, I mean, people say, I just want to earn my daily bread. The business is beyond earning your daily bread. Mm -hmm. The business is more than that. The business is such that, I mean, if you look at some people who have started this business since 2011, 2012, and they, they tell you what they have been able to achieve mm -hmm. while solving problems, mm -hmm. while servicing people, mm -hmm. going to the hinterlands, the creeks, mm -hmm. to service people who, who normally would not be able to come to town to get financial access. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you have people walk a few steps from their house to access their accounts to get funds, to send money to people. Okay. It has made life easier for people. It has put food on the table of people. People have been able to build a house and all of this. But when you now see people who do not have this knowledge go on, on the internet to do skits, comment these skits to disparage the business, you begin to wonder, do they even understand mm -hmm. what this sector entails? Mm -hmm. What problems we are solving? You see, my approach to it is to look at it this way. In an undeveloped or developing society such as ours, like I was telling you, saying, you would always look towards government to build these structures. It's not easy. There's a reason for government. I see a role for CBA in the issue of financial inclusion. You must take the policy from where you start to the end where you want to reach. The problem I see is that... Uh, an informal sector has allowed to, to have, has been allowed to take over the thinking for government. That is why you will find that is why that is why you will find a situation where people are not uh, aware of what they are doing. Mm -hmm. see, I think personally that CBN should have a section if they can't do it themselves. They should create a body to link up with this cooperative that we have mentioned. So, um, not to cut yes. you right, yes. I think that is in place already. Yes. We have uh, what we call uh, SANEF, Shared yes. Agent Expansion. Yes. But, but if they are there, they are not doing what they are supposed to do. Uh, so, these, these problems are things that you need to think through from the level of government. That's why I say, don't just say, okay. If I don't have work to do, eh, I will go there. If I have no, I, I, I am a bereft of thought about what this business are, is about, I will be like that. I will do what we need. But there needs to be more work. When you have a society, the education level is low. Let's not lie about it. We are not educating our people. How many of our people are educated? Uh, across the country, we talk of the Fulani Katu man. You want him to uh, come into the banking system to use POS, to use this, to use that. When he is a nomad, he has no education. So he will say cash. If you are going to do all these things, you need a holistic program from the government level. Not stopping at some point. As oh, private sector, come and, come and take over. Particularly when you know this private sector doesn't have the seniors. They don't have the muzzle. They don't have the capacity. What you are dealing with is a problem of lack of capacity. You can't just leave it to them. The, the banks are there for profit. It is only the government that can think beyond profit and say, look, this policy, we want to use, use it. We, we think beyond profit of individual or banks or whatever. We want to implement a policy of financial inclusion. Take society from this point and take it to the next point. That's what I see here. Of course, that doesn't stop. You must develop education. You must. So there's a whole myriad of things. Government must still do its job. I, 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 I know you say will oppose me. The thing is this. Uh, yes. We cannot take the sector out of the main 
um, I mean, the, the whole spectrum. Mm -hmm. the sec our sector, or how do I put it, is still a, a, a small segment in Nigeria. Yes, yes. And then if you, if you put that into but perspective... But it is within financial inclusion. If you put that into <laughs> perspective, how we run things in Nigeria, mm -hmm. and you understand why we are at this level. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, we, all, we have laws. We, our problem in this country is, has nothing to do with laws and policies. Mm -hmm. We have the laws. But how do we implement these laws? Who are the ones to ensure that the laws are implemented? That is where we have the problem. Until we get that. The end always seems to come too soon on the advocate. However, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate NG. To catch up with the previous broadcast, go to plustvafrica.com slash theadvocate.ng. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time on this station. Let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye-bye.